We Infuse Podcast, episode number 52. Welcome to the We Infuse Podcast. My name is Amanda Brummett. In every episode, we give you a seat at the table as we talk to Infusion Center owners, operators, and experts so that you can get the insight you need to run a thriving practice. In this episode, we talk with Roger Massengill, Chief Commercial Officer of Aton Medical. Roger has all kinds of great information on innovation, technology, data, interoperability, implementing change, and successfully improving the caregiver and patient experience. Well, Roger, thank you so much for being here with us. I know that our listeners are all super excited to hear about your fascinating journey in infusion. And I'd love for you to actually just start out by giving our listeners your background and how you got into the infusion space. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the opportunity to talk to you. I, um, it's a little bit of an unusual path. I, I started in aerospace, and uh, that was my education background. Uh, quickly moved uh, from there to automotive and uh, spent a little time there. Uh, and then uh, after you know, kind of tours of duty in those two industries, decided that I wanted to get into medical because it's a lot more stable. Uh, it was a growing industry, of course. And you know, the other thing is you get to help people uh, recover from illness or injury. And that makes it a lot easier to get passionate about what you do. And, and, uh, so made that jump in, I don't know, it's 1990 or so. Uh, but, uh, but it's, it's been a, a great ride. Really, really enjoy the medical device world. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So from engineer to medical device guy, I, I think it's a big jump, but it's not that big. I could see how it, it really works and probably makes you very good at what you do. Um, I don't know about it. I don't know about that, but thanks, thanks for that. But yeah. what would you say is your biggest area of expertise within the field? That's kind of a difficult question to answer because I've had so many different roles, and um, you know, you've heard the phrase um, "jack of all trades, master of none." I've, I've I've had quite a number of roles from from R and D, obviously, and manufacturing to clinical to marketing, business development, etc. But I think. Um, I'm really right now just lucky to work with a very talented group of people uh, in, in on my team. Uh, they have very, very diverse backgrounds like myself as well. Um, well, I lead the commercial team here at Aton. Uh, most of the people that I work with come from backgrounds like clinical, uh, some in sales, some in marketing, some in operations. A lot of people have R&D or engineering backgrounds too. So it's a uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to work with people with such diverse backgrounds uh, because they, they can bring a lot of uh, expertise and, and opinions to to how we how we practice our, uh, our business and, and, and launch products and, and, and help customers. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that really brings new meaning to a multidisciplinary team. Um, love that, especially when it comes to healthcare technology, for sure. So if there was one thing that you'd want our listeners to learn from your vast background, um, what, what would it be? Uh, I would say uh, I came to this company really in part because uh, the team here um, is, is just incredible. I mean, it's a really talented group of, of engineers uh, and, like I said, clinicians. Um, but we all share kind of the belief that innovation is is super important to success. And, you know, we believe that you know, you just can't launch a product and just, you know, uh, run with r- run with that product forever. You, you've got to be able to innovate uh, after you launch the product and continually improve it. And and, um, you know, we're lucky enough in this position, I, I think, to be able to work directly with clinicians and we can we can kind of see what their pain points are. And sometimes they can't express those pain points uh, in technological solutions. But but if you're working with them closely and you're listening to them and you're asking them questions, uh, you can design uh, solutions or products to, to make their world easier. And, uh, and I, I think making, making a clinician life uh, easier, patient uh, life easier and safer uh, is, is ultimately what we're here for. And it's, 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 uh, it's what we're passionate about. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that you bring that back to the patient. I think we all get so entrenched in our day-to-day operations and uh, making sure everything's running smoothly. And it's so good to pause and remember that we all show up to do this every day. So the patients have a really smooth experience. Um, And a lot of times that is taking care of our team and making all of that easy. Um, So as I, as I was hearing you talk about innovation and technology and not just throwing it out there, but throwing it out there and then improving it, it kind of sounds a little bit like Brian and Reese over at We Infuse. Um, so <laughs> it does make me curious how how do you work with them? How how did that 
how did that happen? We uh, we were in, I was introduced to uh, to them at, by a distributor partner of ours who, who had invited them to speak at a at a conference or a sales meeting I think it was and uh, immediately uh, became uh, really attracted to their 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 passion for infusion. I mean, unbelievably smart people uh, and passionate uh, about innovation and passionate about. Uh, solving problems for customers in the infusion market. And, and they have such an incredible ex- expertise about how infusion therapy is delivered and both in uh, in the home and in infusion suites. And, and those are areas that we focus. And so uh, we hit it off immediately. Um, our teams uh, had quite a, quite a few meetings and still do uh, trying to learn from them about uh, what the struggles of their their customers are and how they're, they're uh, designing products to, to uh, solve problems for their customers. And then uh, we have a, uh, a dream of, of integrating our systems to their systems and and, uh, and just making it easier for our clinicians to care for patients. And that's that's why we got, to, got in touch with them. It's been, a, been a, a great ride so far. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So I know that everybody I've talked to in this space, um, they've run into stumbling blocks, struggles. It's challenging. Um can you share a story with us about sort of a behind the scenes look at um, somewhere where you saw people struggle or you struggled in the infusion space? Uh, I could go on for hours on this, I know <laughs> like a time, but uh, there, there's, there's uh, this segment of the medical device world is, I got to say, it's incredibly challenging. Um, and, and I think it's because everything that we do impacts patient safety and satisfaction, which are super critical, of course. And, and, um, you know, there are a lot of competitors that have come and gone in this market segment because they've struggled to keep their products on the market and um, and much less innovate or, or improve their products. Um, I, I think um, implementing change in medical practices is super difficult and resisting change is is very, very natural and common. I would say very common in medical. I've been fortunate enough to introduce products and technologies, a lot of them in my career, and some of which have been very successful. Uh, we probably talked about earlier, but uh, um, I would say some common attributes in, in uh, successful uh, products. Uh, number one is listening to customer feedback and, and not stopping after, you, after you've launched the product, but maybe in some ways more uh, intently listening to customer feedback after it's in the market. And implementing changes uh, because no product is perfect. And so you've got to be willing to adapt uh, the product to the feedback that you're getting uh, as they're using it. Um, you get a lot of feedback when you launch a brand new product and, and, uh, and some companies, you know, say, look, we spent our money uh, launching the product. We really don't have much of a budget or a team to implement changes after it's out there. Well, that's, that's the wrong, wrong attitude. So I think having a long, long-term view and a commitment to the product and the technology uh, is super important uh, because it can take many years to change practice. Um, you can't expect immediate wins and you got to be committed for the long run. And so uh, I, I don't know if that's a, that's an answer to your question, but that's what came to mind. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. Um, <clears throat> you know, I see that all the time with technology solutions. And I think especially, I don't know that we got specifically got into it, but the pumps or, or what, uh, what your company's working with that, you know, something like that, it needs to be a long-term strategy and, um, you can't just, you can't just roll it out on day one and expect everything to work perfectly. There's a lot of training and development. And so I love that, that you, you tell people to prepare that, um, for any technology that they roll out. Yeah, no, I, there's, there's, like I said, natural resistance to implementation of any new technology because it, it takes time to implement. And, and we all know there's a, there's a nursing shortage and, and, uh, and really a labor shortage in every aspect of, of, uh, of care um, and across every industry right now. It's, it's, it's a real problem. And so if, it, if what you're introducing takes time and effort uh, to implement, it's, it's, it's going to be resisted. So yeah. uh, we've got to make our we got to make the job of the caregiver and the patient easier. That's that's really key. And infusion pumps are, are uh, they're a challenge. They're, you know, a lot of patients don't really want to be on an infusion pump and, and naturally so. And, uh, but they need them, you know, and the medications we deliver are super critical. So, uh, uh, but we just got to make it easier. We're just going to make their job easier. And, and technology, I think, can do that if you're willing to innovate and constantly listen to caregivers, uh, give you feedback. Yeah. So diving just a little deeper into that exact same topic, are there things that you've seen people do really well on the implementation end that you think 
could parlay into other other centers? So one of the things uh, we did as a result of COVID, and and and, and again, I'm not. Uh, trumpeting our success, but we, we've had a lot of success in the last few years, um, particularly so. Uh, but uh, but I think it worked out well as a result of COVID was, uh, you know, finding ways to put tools, education tools online and, uh, and you know, uh, learning modules and, and giving uh, nurses the ability to to learn at their own pace and own time. And, uh, and I think that's super important. And the other thing we've done is, is pump simulators, you know, where you can simulate the use of the device, but, but do that on a PC. And, and uh, uh, I think those have been successful. But the other thing is just be willing to, to come in and, and uh, work through difficult challenges and, uh, and support them. We, we like to say we will run through brick walls for our customers mm-hmm. um, because that's our lifeblood. And if, if we don't have customers, we don't have a business. So, uh, we'll do whatever it takes to make them happy, and and uh, you know I, I think a lot a lot of companies that that do do that well obviously earn the trust uh, of their customers, and they get long long term business out of it. And that's that's what it's all about. Absolutely, for sure. So, what would you say through all your experiences in infusion? What's been your biggest light bulb moment that you can share with owners and operators? Uh, let's see. I. <laughs> Maybe an infusion therapy uh, specific to medical, mm-hmm. uh, the infusion therapy uh, world that I've been living in for the last 30 years or so. Um, I, I would say we're way behind in innovation. Um, I have a F-150 and when I drive my truck into the garage, it automatically updates the software and it sends me notifications uh, on an app that I have. And everything in my home is connected to the Internet, almost everything. So mm-hmm. uh my AC, my stereo, um, my security system, of course. Uh, but in the medical device world, so few things are connected. And uh, and it's it's in part because companies have had struggles to try and keep their product on the market, number one, and number two, innovate. Uh, and, um, and and so the technology certainly exists out there, but but uh, companies have, have not connected their systems to the, to, uh, to, uh, uh, the hospital information system or the ambulatory infusion center information system that's just not connected through the internet, which, which is kind of, kind of dumb um, because the medications we deliver are very, very expensive in some cases, incredibly expensive. And mm-hmm. it's natural for payers and physicians when they prescribe these medications to, to, to want to know that they're making a difference for the patient. Um, is it safe? Are the patients having reactions? Um, are they, are they getting good outcomes? Are they improving? Right. And, um, and so I think the light bulb moment for us was was realizing that this is not an option anymore. We've got to connect everything we do to the internet, and we got to make that data available to the people that that need it. Right. So, so mm-hmm. the physician, the patient, the caregivers, the nurse, the pharmacist, etc. In our in our industry, we've just got to make that data available. And data is it's not an option. It's 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 got to be it's got to be simple and and uh, uh, it's got to be automated. Um, and like I said earlier, you know there's a severe nurse shortage. And so we really don't have a lot of time for nurses to be writing uh, outcomes on, on a piece of paper and then typing that into a system, an EMR system, uh, and, and then mining that data for some sort of insight. We've got to make it much, much simpler for, for nurses and caregivers to find out, is the patient taking the medication properly? Are they getting the good uh, the outcomes that they expect? Are there, are there complications or issues with the infusion that need to be addressed? And focusing on those patients who are having issues, as opposed to those that uh, that are doing well, uh, allocating the labor to the right right spot, I think is really really important. Um, anyway, so so the light bulb is is data connectivity, not an option. It's got to happen, and it's 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 about time uh, in the infusion industry to make sure that that happens outside the hospital. Obviously, we know what happens inside the hospital, but not not generally outside the hospital when infusion suites are home. Right. I totally agree, Roger. And I am shocked that in 2022, we're still talking about this, that, I mean, we've been talking about interoperability for 30 years now in healthcare. Um, So I'm ecstatic to hear that you guys are doing it and making it possible for, you know, the folks that are using your products. And yeah, we, we've all got to work harder on that um, to make it easier for the patients, easier for the staff. And, and it's just better. It's such a missed opportunity when you've got the technology and you don't use it. Great. Well, shifting gears, tell me what you are most excited about right now in the infusion industry, in what you're doing, in, in anything in that space. 
Well, uh, we have, like I said, we've had great success with the, the Sapphire infusion system. I mean, we've um, uh, really gone uh, at light speed. It's 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 been crazy since um, uh, just before COVID, and then through COVID, uh, we've just been very very fortunate, and uh, and so we're super excited about some of the innovations that we're bringing to bear on on, on that system. Uh, and we're launching a little bit later this year uh, something called Aton Insights, which is connecting our system to uh, uh, to a dashboard of insights that that will help a healthcare provider manage the infusion better. Uh, and in the home, it's it's particularly important. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of patients who are treated at home. Um, you'd, you'd be shocked, but uh, a lot of these patients lose the infusion pumps and. And oh, no. uh, st- statistics that we we uh, have found have been anywhere between five and twenty percent of infusion pumps get lost each year, which is crazy. Uh, and these are not uh, inexpensive assets. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I use uh, my iPhone to to know what my kids are doing, right? And, sure. and something called Find My iPhone is a stupid simple technology, and and um, or if I misplaced my AirPods or something, I, I can in seconds figure out where the last last time this thing was used. And and um, so we're bringing that technology to infusion pumps. And so we're gonna we're gonna give that insight to uh, to our providers where they can know where the pumps are, uh, where they were last in essence, where they were last used, and then more importantly, uh, give them uh, data on on how they're performing and and uh, you know whether or not the patient's getting the medication they they were supposed to get uh, and giving them insights. You know, maybe, maybe this pump is, is alarming. You might want to call that patient, that sort of thing. And so uh, all of that data is available in the system today. We just had to come up with a very simple vehicle, kind of a stupid, simple vehicle mm-hmm. to make it really easy to see and use. And, and that's what we've done. So we're super excited about that. We'll be launching that a little bit later uh, this year initially on the Sapphire and then on some other products as well as they get launched. So very, very excited about that. Wow. That is incredible. I, you still, you lost me at infusion pumps get lost. (laughs) (laughs) I um, am shocked. (laughs) Well, you'd be surprised at where they end up. I mean, uh, and and I'll give you one case study. It makes sense. If if a patient's being treated at home and let's say they have a complication, they have to go to the hospital, they might bring their pump with them to the hospital. Okay. So that makes sense. when they they check in at the ER, guess what? The hospital grabs this thing, sticks it in the corner, they lose it. They don't know where it is. And and so for the home care provider who paid for that pump, they want it back. And the patient doesn't really remember they were having an event, uh, and that and their family member might not remember. So that that's a pretty common uh, issue. But but yeah, five to twenty percent of these pumps get lost each year. It's crazy. Wow, yeah. amazing. Amazing. Well, I love the way that you guys are integrating all of that technology and getting that real-time data um, back to the folks that need it. That is fantastic. Well, Roger, you have been a wealth of information on lots of different things. I um, I feel like you've really inspired us all to do a better job um, with our technology and interoperability. Is there one last piece of advice that you can give to our listeners? Yeah, I guess I would say be open to change. I mean, we've all moved from dumb flip phones with nine or 10 buttons, or I don't know how many buttons a flip phone has, but small number of buttons that you know, they're just stupid devices. We moved pretty quickly to smartphones because it made our lives easier. But if you go back and you look at how different our lives are because of what power we have in our pocket with that, with that phone, that smartphone, it really has been a remarkable change. And so being open to making that change is is super important. And in, in medicine, I think we need to make that same shift. And that's what we're trying to do at Aton is, is uh, give smart devices to people that are connected, that allow them to, to learn more about the patient and what's going on with that therapy. And, and uh, if you're open to it and you're willing to take a little bit of pain in making that transition, um, we're confident that your life will be a lot easier and a lot, a lot more efficient in the future and cost of care will go down, patient satisfaction will go up. We hope patient safety will be improved as well. So that's the dream. Fantastic. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you for all that you've done to drive technology forward in the industry. And thank you for your partnership with WeInfuse. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. 
Wow. I don't know about you, but Roger really got me pumped up about implementing technology, interoperability, data, and being open to change. Roger had such great advice on how to do technology right, and the benefits for caregivers and patients are clear. Speaking of technology, if you aren't familiar with the WeInfuse software platform, I encourage you to schedule a test drive to see how they can save you time and money in your practice. My name is Amanda Brummett, and we'll catch you in the next episode.